Hello guys. In this video I'm building something that I haven't built for a while, over a year in fact, which is a small sci-fi model. I was picking up some Tamiya paint in my local hobby craft and I came across these Revel Star Wars X-Wings. They also had a couple of TIE Fighters, a snow speed I think as well. And I thought for 8 quid I'll pick a pair up and uh, see what I can do with them. I'm a huge fan of the Bandai Star Wars kits, which are generally in a larger scale but also come with a larger price tag. One thing I do notice about these uh, Revel kits is they come in a strange scale. This is 1 to 112. No idea why they've chosen that number. If you were looking to have a TIE Fighter for this to chase, you'd be slightly out of luck because Revel's TIE Fighter is in 1 to 110. And if you wanted a snow speeder somewhere on the scene, that would be in 1 to 52 scale. No idea what Revel are doing there. Anyway, on their own, I thought this X-Wing would be a decent kit. The box, at least, is very honest about what you get inside. So I've got 21 parts and it's 110mm in length. As we might expect opening the box, we don't get a huge number of sprues. Uh, only two here plus one small set of clear parts. Just over half the box size in fact, these sprues. But you can see even looking at it through the packaging that the detail looks decent. Maybe not as good as Bandai decent, but still decent. The instruction booklet is Revel's latest format, A4, full colour. And it's broken down well with a, a small number of actions per step. Um, quite accessible, I would say, for a new modeler or a beginner modeler. We've got a single piece for the cockpit into which the pilot goes. That slots into the upper half of the fuselage. We build up the wings, build up the second wing, add the two wings together, and then push the two fuselage halves together as well. And as you'll notice throughout the booklet, there's quite a few decals and bits and pieces to go on there as well. So you can actually get away without even painting this. Here's a quick look at those wing parts. Probably at this scale those panel lines are quite deep, but uh, you know this is science fiction and I think it looks quite decent. The pilot figure is also surprisingly well detailed, including his face. Because I wanted to airbrush these kits, I decided to deviate from the instructions and not put the cockpit into place just yet. Equally, the glass needs to go in before the cockpit. One thing you'll notice is that just like the Bandai kits, these are push together for kits and the tolerances are tight enough that uh, you don't really need any glue. What I did proceed with, however, was the wings, although I seem to notice a mistake in the instructions straight away. This piece here is supposed to be part three. You can see it's labeled there in the top left. However, taking part three, I couldn't get it to match the diagram. Whereas if I take part four, that does seem to match what we're seeing there on the instructions. We simply slot these engine air intakes into place. Again, I didn't use any glue there. And then push the outer piece of the engine into location. I actually told a lie earlier, I did use a little bit of extra thin on a couple of these engines where the fit wasn't quite tight enough and there was a small gap. So I put some extra thin in there and then clamped them closed overnight. So here are our two wings. They're not really top and bottom because they go in in a cross shape like so. And that makes our X-wing. That little uh, nib there on the left-hand side of the centre is what prevents us having the wings in the closed position, which is something that you might want to do. If you did want to put them in that position, there's no reason you couldn't just cut that off. Even with a relatively small contact area of these cannons on the wingtips, I only needed glue on one of them, I think. With the wings in the X position, we put the lower hull underneath them, and there's a notch there to 
let the wings sit uh, tight in the centre. The top of the fuselage comes down over the top. Obviously the cockpit will need to go in position and there is a backing plate here that needs to go in as well. And essentially that is our construction phase for the X-Wing. Now we do get this decal sheet here which includes lots of markings and bits and pieces. And the instructions are quite clear on where they go during the build process. I'm not going to use any of those though. I'm not going to paint my X-Wings using the red markings. Instead I'm going to use some blue markings just to make them a little bit different really. And equally although we've got a decal there for the canopy, I'm going to mask and paint mine. So here are my two X-Wing kits after they've been built up, given a base coat of XF69 NATO black, and then a top coat of a very slightly off-white colour. This was white with sort of half a drop of uh, NATO black in it, and even then it's come out a little bit too dark for my, uh, my preference. But that's fine, we can lighten that up later. And you'll notice I've been deliberately uneven on this top coat, so that shadow coat of NATO black shows through. And it helps the X-Wings to look a little bit grimy there. Those very deep panel lines are also showing quite significantly at the moment. All of the details were brush painted with Vallejo model colour. Partly because I didn't want to do any masking, and partly because I really enjoy using the model colour. It goes down very smoothly with a small amount of water to thin it and you couldn't really ask for much more. The steel colour that I used here on the exhausts is from Vallejo again, it's their metal colour range. These are great paints, I talk about them in most videos. You can brush paint them straight out of the bottle and you can airbrush them straight out of the bottle too, which is very rare. With the details on the engines like this, I wasn't using any particular reference, I was simply painting things the way I liked them, sort of breaking up the surface colour. This metal colour is Vallejo metal colour aluminium, or I think it's actually dark aluminium. One of the features we see on the X-Wings in the films is different colour panels, like they've been repaired and beaten up and so on. So again I simply took a mix of black and white in different ratios to pick out a few panels here and there. And because of the way I'm going to display these X-Wings, I made extra sure to make sure I did the same thing on the bottom of the wings as well as the top. We do get an R2 droid with the kit, and I painted one with sort of blue markings and one with red markings. I painted inside the exhaust a white colour initially, because I wanted that characteristic pink glow that we see in the films, and uh, I would use some transparent red over the top of that later. So apparently there is an official marking scheme for different X-Wings. We have this shape here, which is always painted. And then just behind that we have up to five uh, flashes marking, in this case, blue one through to five. You'll notice in this case that Revel have moulded in those flashes, so we've got three moulded ones, but in reality they should just be painted on the surface. Rather than go with the red that comes with the decals, I decided to use blue. I made this first one blue 3, and my second one blue 2. Normally I wouldn't use brush painting with a mask like this, but in this case, for the stripe along the side of the fuselage, it was sufficient to get the job done. Those deep panel lines do cause thin paint to seep up them a little bit in a capillary action, but it'll be easy enough to scrape that away later. Vallejo paint is fairly soft, and these X-Wings tend to have a sort of beaten up look about them anyway. The pilot was given an overall coat of orange and then details like his face and his vest and his controls were picked out in a variety of colours. Again these are all Vallejo model colours. And I do think that for a 1 to, what was it, 112 scale figure he is fairly detailed and I'm quite happy with the way that paint job's come out. Here I am adding that exhaust glow.
and with the rear cockpit glass in place, I could put the X-Wings together. For the base, I wanted to have the X-Wings flying low over some water, kicking up a bit of spray in their wake. I had this old picture frame kind of thing, I'm not really sure what it is, hanging around. It's got a bit of depth to it, so I fooled it with some scraps of XPS foam. This is why I keep all the offcuts of things that I've made, because they come in really handy in a time like this. This is just to build volume, it's nothing to do with shape or anything like that. To get the shape I applied some DAS air drying clay. I tried to work it into the approximate shape of the waves and tried to have a sort of V-shape wake coming out of the back of where the X-wings would be. This was smoothed out with some water before it dried, but any imperfections or cracks are not super important because there's going to be another layer on top. There are many techniques for making water and I've covered a few of them in videos in the past. One of my favourites is the PVA glue and water with toilet roll method. Incidentally, I think a solid water method like this is better than resin for something like the ocean because we want to give the impression of quite a deep ocean and that's quite hard to achieve with just maybe 10 mil of resin. So as you can see, I'm putting down a couple of layers of toilet paper soaking it with the uh, PVA glue water mix and dabbing that into shape to give me the fine ripples on the surface of the water. This is approximately how our X-wings will be over the surface. The key to getting a nice deep effect here on this is multiple layers. So I started with some white primer then Tamiya XF17 Sea Blue, which looks quite dark, almost black here. Followed by some X25 Clear Green. This of course is nowhere near the final stage, but to build up that depth effect, I added some of this gloss gel from Liquitex. Quite thickly in this case, it will dry clear. And once it's done so, or has almost done so here, you can see straight away that looks a lot deeper. And that's only the first layer. I then went back and added some Tamiya clear blue in certain areas because the water was a bit too green, followed by another coat of the Liquitex. And finally I added some very thinned white to the top of the waveforms to suggest shallower water. This is definitely not the best water effect I've ever had, but it's not too bad. A bit of dry brushing with some white on the wave caps. The next thing was then to secure the X-Wings onto the base. To be honest, I hadn't really thought about that until this point because I wasn't sure what to do. In the end, I went for some of this clear styrene rod. Cut to length. These X-Wings are pretty light, so it shouldn't be a big issue to just to glue those onto the wings. And then they were simply secured into the base by drilling a small hole. The great thing about this Liquitex gel is it's very um, rubbery. So once you put the supports in there, it will go back into its original shape and uh, cling onto them quite well. 
and you shouldn't need to do any touching up of paint or anything. With a slight angle on the top of that um, styrene support, it was quite easy to get the X-Wing at an angle. Supported by my trusty Tamiya Extra Thin bottle while the glue dried. And there we go, there's our two X-Wings in the correct positions. Finally it was time to build up the wake. That was done again with the Liquitex gel. Trying to build it into quite a vertical pattern. It won't hold much height each time so you need to make three or four different passes here letting it dry overnight in between. This is the end of the first pass and you can see here even overnight it's not quite dried clear because it is quite thick gel but that's absolutely fine. That's kind of the effect you want anyway. As I say I made about three or four different passes of this on separate days to really build up those wakes. And with that my diorama was complete. So there we go guys, that was my small water-based diorama of two X-Wings from Revel. This was a nice cheap build, X-Wings at £8 each, the wooden frames, the clay, the XPS foam and of course the PVA and the toilet paper I already had so I'm just using up older materials. And it was a relatively quick build too. And of course I've used this water effect in my Star Wars diorama but you can use them in plenty of other applications too. Um, they work well with ships for example. Um, but you have vehicles going in them like um, jeeps and things like this, amphibious vehicles and so on. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. I feel like I'm back now into the uh, flow of making models and making videos again. I would like to say thank you to all of you for watching and special thanks to my YouTube members and Patreon supporters. One thing the supporters of the channel get is regular updates on ongoing projects. So if that's something you'd like to see, then there are links in the description below. I hope to have another video ready for you next week. So until then, thank you again for watching, and have fun modelling.